from C sharp minor to A flat. Um, there's m two ways to interpret this. The initial way I would say is to interpret this as in order to make sense as to move from four crosses to four. Uh, I think it's moles in English too, right? So four. Ooh. Right? Could be. The I things that, that make it sharp and the things that make it flat. Let's leave yeah. it at that. It's crosses and moles in Dutch, so I will call it crosses and moles. You know what I'm talking about anyway. So the the chromatically alternating symbols that are written at the beginning of each yeah. system, they are the same in number, only being at crosses here and there and being at whatever it's called in English, let's call it moles. We move from A flat to G sharp minor. And that's of course the same as I initially explained. Uh, we can make sense of that when we look at that mm -hmm. initial uh, uh, note of the key. Um, so the tonic is anharmonically the same one, G sharp and A flat, that being. Moving from G sharp to E, that's of course uh, a third, so that's uh, a medium connection, so uh, it's a, a 3 1, if you will. From E to C sharp, same, C sharp to A, same. A to F sharp same, so that all makes sense. F sharp to C sharp, of course, being a dominant. Uh, F sharp being the the tonic and C sharp being the dominant, so that's a one five. That also makes a lot of sense in classical music. Then we move from C sharp to C sharp minor. That's also very clear and logical because we have here a switch to uh, from the major minor, so they have the same name. They're both C scales, only one being major, the other being minor. Then we move from C sharp minor to A flat. I already sat here when well we were here, C sharp minor to A flat. Now we're here, C sharp minor to A flat. I already said that. There's two explanations. So the first one I've already given, which was being from four crosses to four, let's call it moles. The other explanation would be to interpret the A flat, of course, as a G sharp. Because a G sharp, as I already explained, major scale is exactly the same, anharmonically at least, as an A flat major scale, right? So then it would be a dominant, and then it would be a 1 5, looking at the C sharp, and that would make sense. And then we have the final bit again, interpret the A flat as a G sharp, and it all makes sense because then it's just a medium connection from E to G sharp to E to G sharp, so that's a 1 3 3 1 1 3. And that makes a lot of sense. Now also now that we started off with G sharp minor and that we ended with A flat and that they are anharmonically a major minor difference but at least the uh, first term of the scale so the tonic is anharmonically the same one so we can somewhat interpret this as A flat moving to A flat. Please do interpret it like that because then I will make uh, another interesting remark when we look at the broad picture. So the second impression then um, much easier to explain than the first one. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to say that to you. We move from A minor to E, that's of course the dominant. We move from E to A, which is again the dominant, but now we move back to major, A minor, A major. Moving from A to C sharp is of course the median, so that's a 1, 3, 3, 1 to A back. And then we move to E flat, 5. What's happening here? Doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Well. We can make sense of it if we look at it in the similar way as we did before in the first uh, impression at one of the modulations. Because A has three crosses, right? And E flat has three moles, if we will. So it's switch from three crosses to three moles. Now the next one will make sense in a similar fashion. If we look at F minor, and it will be the same scale as A flat major. And A flat major has how many moles? Probably said it. A flat major. Uh, you know it from the from the choir yeah, pieces. Yeah, yeah, I doubt. Anybody else? I don't think so. Okay, so that's four moles. So we move from E flat to F minor, so that we move from three moles to four moles. So that also makes sense. Now we move from F minor to E flat to A minor, and I'm going to explain this by saying. We're making a parallel movement in order to return back to the origin, right? So we have A, let's ignore major minor here. We have A, then we have E flat, we have F minor, we have E flat. So just put a mirror right there, and then we have A. 
right? So that's that's parallel movement. And we move back to A minor, which is very important. Because we started off with A minor, again, like I said in the first impression, interpreted as A flat to A flat. Here we have A minor to A minor. So there's some kind of a circle structure, right? There's some kind of a connection between the beginning and the ending. It's highly interesting. And then we have the final section, which again begins in A flat. And this is also important, because the final section also begins with A flat, and ignore this F, ends with A flat. So again, this is, <laughs> I'll get back to that, I'll get back to that. So this is also a circle structure, and this is the important bit, because the circle structure in the first and the third impression is based on A flat, and in the second impression is based on A, right? So A minor, so there's a big difference there. You have a switch in the second impression of character. Ignore the major minor, but you increase at least with the, the tonic, so the first note in the scale, with uh, the smallest distance possible diatonically, right? With a small, I think it's it's secunde in Dutch. I'm not really sure what it's in English, but right, you increase you increase with half a, a increase with the semitone, or yeah, you increase with the semitone, right? So that's what you do, and then we move back to a flat. So that's a contrast between the first and the third impression. That's the second impression. That's also very classical to do, so I think they must have thought about that at least. Um, so let's look at A flat, we move on to D, so in the third impression, sorry, for these final modulations. Um, yeah, we're going to have to look at this in a, in a more abstract way again, like I did before. Um, so A flat has four moles. D, remember the numbers, don't remember whether they're moles or crosses. A flat has four moles, so four. D major has two crosses, so two. E flat minor has six moles, so six. And then back to A flat, which again has four moles. So you have a switch from four to two to six to four. So that's some kind of a multiplication of the number two, right? You can see yeah, some yeah, pattern yeah. in there. Sure. That could make sense. And then finally we move from A flat to F. Now that's very strange. That's of course with the final uh, arpeggiator uh, uh, motif on the synthesizer, well, on the arpeggiator. Um, so why move to F? Why not stick in A flat? Because it makes so much sense in the main piece, looking at the general picture. That's a very interesting question. You could of course respond by saying, oh well, that makes a lot of sense, I mean, Surely you have noticed that it's a median. It's a 3-1, right? Well, not really, because it's not F minor. So it would be F major. So then if we move from A to F, that would make a lot of sense. But because it's A flat, it doesn't make a lot of sense to move to F major. That's very odd. So I've come up with two explanations, and they are very interesting explanations, because the distance is a median. So the distance is a third. And here we go. The first interpretation is that we can interpret this third at the ending as a metaphor to ELP, because they consist of three members. The second interpretation is that the third uh, is a metaphor for um, the three impressions, because the piece consists of three impressions. So that's, that's an interesting one, right? Yeah, that could be. <laughs> so enough about scales. Let's look at the meshes. I can see a lot of people looking very, very excited. Excited, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the word. Uh, speechless, yeah, indeed. So we already had how many different scales in total? 13, but we had like, well, you can count the modulations, right? There's over 30 modulations in total. We also have 15 different measures in the piece, so that's also crazy. Um, of course, this is interesting. The, fir the first one has eight different ones, and the third one has two different ones. That makes sense, because the first one is long, and the third one seems fairly simple from a compository uh, perspective. Now, the second impression has 13 different ones, and we know that the scales were decreasing in the different, uh, sorry, that the keys were decreasing in the different number, in the number of different keys used in the impression when we move from one to three in the impressions. There's a difference here with measures, because the second impression has more measures, uh, more different ones. 
And I guess that makes sense because the second piece is the most virtuoso piece of the three impressions. And of course, ELP is very, I mean, very, very, very much into rhythmic uh, virtuosity. They're very rhythmical people. Keith Emerson, of course, Carl Palmer. Um, so they're very rhythmical people. So that makes a lot of sense that the most virtuoso part has most uh, measures, but not per se most different keys. Uh, so yeah, you can yeah. look at them. The fourth fourth and the fifth fourth and the third three fourth and the two fourth. Uh, they're relatively common, I guess, that we could, yeah. we could accept that. Seven eighth is already a bit irregular, but now we get nine eighth, twelve eighth, six eighth. I'm not sure about you, but I'm fairly certain I haven't seen those in any other piece before. Um, then of course the second impression, 4-4, four 2-4, fourth, fourth, 5th, 16th, and there we go, 5th, 16th, 7th, 16th, a 12th, 16th, a 3-8th, a 9th, 16th, a 6-4th, so it's the other way around, with which is the highest number. Now a 4-8th, right, a 9-8th, and a 5-4th. Now a 5-4th is then fairly common in jazz music, but the rest is like, What's going on? Yeah. It's very odd. It's very odd. Um, yeah, so a lot of different, very interesting measures you can get really excited about. Mm. Um, and of course, I've put the, uh, the page three, page five thingy there in the middle uh, of the measures for the first impression. Because in the first impression, there's this certain rhythmical structure which is repeated. This is this pattern that we move from four fourth to fifth fourth to three fourth. 2 fourth, so there's 5, 3, 2, and back to 4 fourth. And that's very interesting because that pattern repeats itself on page 5, so that's a characteristic rhythmical repetition right there. Um, and yeah, you can, you can be very happy after you've scrutinized the sheet music for many hours to have finally found in the third impression one bar that had a different measure. So I was very excited to have found that on page 8 indeed there was one bar in two fourth, but the rest of the third impression is four fourth. So that's very yeah. interesting. Um, measure types then, all of them, incredible. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> so again, like I said before, the simple duple and the simple triple are, ex are already explaining what they are like, right? I, I don't really have to go through it. So you have the simple duple is included in the piece, the simple triple, the compound regular duple and the compound regular triple and the compound complex duple and the compound complex triple all different types of measure types or of measures all of them are included so that's very interesting and I've given some examples as well uh, Beif means of course by Vorbild which is Dutch for for example so that's giving an explanation of it for the compound regular duple for fourth for the compound complex triple seven eighth, you can look yeah. at the size at home. So that's all very exciting that they've combined so many measures. Now, it, what's less exciting, but I guess the measures really do make up for that, is the amount of anti-metric figures, as we say in Dutch, or tuplets, as you say in English, that are included in the piece. Because we basically only have triplets in all three impressions, and we do have some quadruplets in the second impression, but it's only very briefly. So that's. Um, that's exciting. There's no, no six, no seven, no eight, no nine, no thirteen. Right? You you could have done a lot more with that. But then again, if you have these measures, why bother making it even more complicated? And we also have already the the uh, polyrhythm, which I explained, right? With these anti-metric figures appearing at the same time as the metrical figures. So that's also a lot of excitement for the people playing the piece already. So you don't really have to make it more complicated than that. 